this week on Carolina All Out. Kevin is going to take us out and show us what a flyer is all about. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, look one. at that one. <laughs> wow. Okay. There you go. There's a flyer. We have look a flyer that. on board. Doubled up. Flyer right. on board. Oh, he's ready to go. There you go. There he is. Yeah. Oh, that's a bigger fish there. Look how pretty that crappy that. is there. <laughs> what you got, something good? Nice crappy. There you go. Slightly, that slight movement. Yeah, that's a beauty. Wow. That is a huge flyer. Look at that. Wow. Flyers and crappy on the creeks of northeastern North Carolina. This is Carolina All Out. <laughs> This week, the all-out crew heads from home base all the way to what's known as the Finger Counties of Northeastern North Carolina, and Perquimans County in particular, to meet up with Coastal Fisheries Research Coordinator Kevin Dockendorf to target the flyer. The flyer is somewhat unknown to many anglers, but these little fish are hard fighters for their size and are hard to beat as table fare. Kevin is taking Chris to the Yopum Creek, which terminates into the Yopum River which immediately empties into the Albemarle Sound. This Blackwater Creek is alive with wildlife and fish and offers an almost backcountry experience even though it's closely surrounded by residential properties. Well, as you can see, I'm in my fishing attire and I'm with Kevin Dockendorf and Kevin is gonna take us out and show us what a flyer is all about. This is a fantastic fish that lives kind of all over the place, but not a lot of people know about them, Kevin? Right, yeah, I mean, they're in front, throughout the southeast, but they're really up in these headwater creeks around the lily pads and, and chilling out up in these swamp waters. They really like a little bit different water quality than crappy and bluegill. It's a little bit more acidic or a lower pH, but not too acidic that they can't live in it. But that's what they prefer. So yeah, we'll go give it a try. So we're gonna to get to show you what this unique fish looks like. You be the judge. A lot of people say they look like a mix between maybe a crappy and a brim. Right? right, right. They say, are you kidding me? This just looks like a hybrid, but that they're actually their own species of that type. So really unique to, opportunity to come out and fish them today. Oh, it's fantastic. We're gonna be doing this on this creek. We'll be telling you all about it. It can get hot and heavy quick. There you got it. There you go. Crappy. What have I got here? Crappy. Kim? Got a crappy. Okay, we know there's crappy in here. All right, I'm gonna take him. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a fun thing that we're doing here, and it can be a comedy of errors because we're in tight spaces. A little crappy there. Kevin has taken us here to a, a dock that. Uh, has both. Kevin, would you say flyers and crappy? Yep. They live together. Kevin just got bit. So, all you crappy fishermen know who have fished docks before. It can be a little bit frustrating when you get under there and you can't really set the hook like you want. Oh, Kevin's got something going on there. Another crappy? Yep. Kevin's got him. I can put this back here. So talk to everybody about, now we, we're obviously here for both, but yep. the flyer is the one that we really are looking forward to. And so tell everybody about this fish here, because you're the biologist. Okay, so uh, this is a this is a, a black crappie. Uh, many folks around here in northeastern North Carolina and really throughout the south also known them as specks. Um, they do have a genus species name, so just to throw them, that in there is Pomoxis nigromaculatus. 
And that's a lot of words to say that that's a speckled side of the skin. And um, you also know white crappie, but they uh, have lines around the, down the side. And so their species name is annularis. So this is Niger maculatus, meaning black speckles along the side. These are, we'll find a lot more black crappie in these coastal creeks. Um, there can be a few white crappie in the area, um, but, but by and large, we'll catch. There you go. There's a flyer. We have Look a flyer that. on board. Doubled up, flyer right. on board. <laughs> I'll let that one well, go. Well, I hated to, to uh, break up your talk about the black crappie, <laughs> but this is the guy that we've been coming for, that, isn't that's it? That's how it works right there, yeah. How about that? Yeah, so we got, we got both uh, flyer and crappie in the same general area. But again, some of these coastal creeks are a little bit more uh, acidic with the cypress knees that flow into it. Uh -huh. But there's deep water here off to the edge, about 10 foot of water. Right. And those crappy enjoying the area. But then we got flyer. Look at these things, man. Rib right next to it. I can see exactly. This is the first one I've ever caught. Okay. And so this is really one of those that I can see where everybody's like, what am I looking at yes. here? So, yeah, it's definitely kind of like, well, that was just like big bluegill fins. And, but it looks like a crappy, and red is that thing. I've never caught one before. Uh huh. Um, so you think of it when you're catching a crappy. Well, that must be some type of crappy I've just never seen before. Right. But flyers and crappy in this area uh, tend to overlap each other. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn this loose. I love that little green uh, yep. patch on his cheek there. Yep. How about that? Yep. Oh, he's ready to go. There he goes. Uh, Don't go away. More small water adventure when we return. That is a huge fly. Look at that. Wow. Carolina All Out is brought to you by AgriSupply. It's what's inside. Carolina Cooker, Tools, Cooks, Legends. The North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission, celebrating 75 years of wildlife conservation. Chad Lee Boat and Marine, the South's premier boating superstore and by DNH RV and Marine, your truck camper destination in the Southeast. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. There's one. Oh, what you got there? Looks like a flyer to me. Oh, oh yeah, look one. at that one. <laughs> wow, that's it. Now, are we talking about these, top end fish yes, here? Yes, these are some of the nine, 10 inch yeah. quality, wow. quality flyers. Look at that, look at that. Look at that Feel guys. the heft in that fish. I mean, it's so broad. Wow, it's, let me get a, him up for everybody yeah. to see here. Look at I mean. the thickness of that. Wow. Kevin and Chris are staged up next to a dock on the Yopum Creek in Perquimans County, catching a mixed bag of flyers and crappie. Oop, there he is. Oh, man, I wasn't even, <laughs> I was. I didn't have my hand on the reel. <laughs> Sorry to bring him over you like that. Here's another okay. flyer. Another flyer. Now these guys are a lot like crappy. You get them kind of fired up in a place yeah. and they just go to town. Oh don't yeah. They? yeah. <laughs> and it, it's amazing how they set up and like you put it right back to where that spot was. Right. And sure exactly. enough, well, there was a release that, there. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Hey, that was and, fun. And if you look underneath that dock, you'll see another bed of lily pads. I see, yeah, yeah. So now they've got, not only do they got the lily pads in the back of it, they've got the structure to a little bit deeper water, then mm -hmm. they got escape to the other, to the deepest uh, point. So gotcha. they can go from foot of water to 10 foot of water in a, in a burst if they needed to. Yeah. There you go. Crappy on that one. Mm -hmm. So again, we're catching uh, crappy and flyer in this. There we go. Yeah. You, wanna, yep, you got, you a, got fly. a flyer. There's flyers on it. this side. I can see. Oh, I'm going to bring them over <laughs> you again. Sorry, Double. I have nowhere else to go with them there. <laughs> Double. <laughs> yeah, so we got, so there's our yep. proof right there. We've got crappy and and flyer, flyer hanging out with one another. Yeah. So anyway, we'll let this guy go because I love to catch him too. So let's turn him loose. Oh, he's ready oh. to go. There he is. Oh, that's a bigger fish there. Is that a bass? What is that? Big crap. Look at that. Wow. Man, I want to keep him. He's going right to the bass. Come on. Come on. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he was a good one. I couldn't even see him there from where we're. Beautiful. 
Wow. Man, now we've caught some nice, memorable size flyers, but those are those some are great, great crappie Look at that. for this area. Look how pretty Look that crappie that. is there. <laughs> yeah, we got a basket if you like, otherwise we can put it back for next time. <laughs> Your well, I'll tell you what, B, we have a basket. Let's see what we can catch. If you don't mind, I know we're trying to show everybody how these fish, how great these fish are, but this is actually a really nice fish there yep. that could really make a nice fillet it for me. It will, two of them. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> nice, nicely done. Feel like I'm. Oh, there there you go. That might be a flyer right. there. We've got the bounce around. Got a circling. That's a big flyer. Oh, That's huge. Wow. That is a huge These flyer. Are, look at look that. Look at the size of that, wow. that flyer there. And I mean, I'm sitting here going off that of what is. you're saying, Kevin, but I'd say he, he was as big as anything we yep. caught. Yeah. Yep. Huh? Yep. That's that's a that's Super. definitely a memorable size. Wow. I mean, those are big. Would this be flyers. a citation? It would be. A, everyone we've caught so far is actually a citation. citation. How about that? Seven oh. inches are better. So anything oh, yeah. eight, nine, ten. I mean, those are. Oh, look at you, you are right on the look at that that when we call a type specimen a type big flyer you are holding right now in your hands and very few people have really caught and kept or handled a flyer of that size um this often well, i mean i feel special <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you out here to enjoy these fish oh it's They're, very very much very much uh, uh, an opportunity for us to do this this thing Hey, more flyer fish in action right after these messages. The Fishbone Facts brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. During World War II, a vessel was named the USS Flyer after the fish. What type of vessel was it? A, cruiser, B, submarine, or C, aircraft carrier? Find out the answer after the break. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Marine and Estuary Foundation. Think Coastal. Bear Creek Arsenal, performance through innovation. Farms and Land Realty, selling land is what we do. Montgomery Community College, blaze your trail. And by Creek Boats, the ultimate in small boating. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. During World War II, a vessel was named the USS Flyer after the fish. What type of vessel was it? The answer is B, a submarine. Find out more about our awesome fisheries and where to go at ncwildlife.org. The bite continues as the sun rises higher and the Yopum Creek is yielding both flyers and crappie for Chris and Kevin. What you got, something good? Nice crappie. There you go. Yep. Oh and yeah. So just um, you know, slightly that slight movement. Yeah, that's the beauty. Wow. Man, look nice. at that. Okay. If you pay attention to where the where that lip strike is, sometimes you can determine where you want to set your set your baits. Usually in the top lip means they came up and they ah, I see. Uh -huh. hit it. If you lower and you know less often you catch it in the lower lip. Usually you're catching it up here on the that top, right. top lip. It's gonna be a release to the grease or release to the water. I think release to the grease. We got some <laughs> we got a pretty good B we're we're picking up a, a, a little group of them. That's it. Not bad. You know, crappy and I think flyer are somewhat similar too. They really have capabilities of feeding under low light conditions. Mm -hmm. So these docks and under, you know, even cypress tree limbs and all that um, are, provides a opportunity for these fish to feed under low light conditions and that's kind of where they do their best. NC Wildlife Coastal Fisheries Research Coordinator Kevin Dockendorf spent his childhood in Northeast Iowa fishing with his family and fostering his love for the outdoors. Encouraged by his high school guidance counselor, Kevin pursued a wildlife and fisheries degree at Iowa State and from there went on to work for a number of agencies over the years. In 2002, Kevin was hired as an assistant District 1 fisheries biologist and has been a part of numerous studies on our state's fisheries since then. 
focusing his career on freshwater fish populations in swamps, coastal rivers, and brackish habitats, Kevin is always ready to share his knowledge with others, making him the perfect guide to target flyers and educate Chris on their habits. <laughs> One that finally got hooked Decided enough to, to catch it. Decided to take it all, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not just biting at the tail. Yeah, so I mean, these these crappy, not quite as big as that uh, last, the other one, but these are of that size, quality. You know, they're probably two years old relatively in this system, so they're already eight inches or better, uh -huh. which is bigger than the regulation, and they're likely to be spawning uh, next spring. Um, it's like your fish. It's your yeah. fish. Yeah. You know, it's like you, 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 I know you can't claim it, but at no. the same time, it's the fish you've been um, yeah. with so long, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, when you get, when you just are in that type of like, I'm going to think like a fish today, mm -hmm. or I'm thinking like a crappie, I'm uh -huh. thinking like a flyer, because you look at what they ate. Right. You look at how old they are. Um, we just find these, you know, when we look at a fish, we just have a different sight to them just because of the biology that we've vetted into understanding or the time spent to just understanding these fish. And it's mm -hmm. just like anything else. If you think about something that you're specialized in, I might not be the resident expert on largemouth bass. I'm, I know a little, but when it comes to crappie and flyer, it certainly, I, I absolutely love them. And um, Dockendorf knows. They fire me up. <laughs> Sounds like a segment of a show. Dockendorf knows. <laughs> Don't go away. There's more Carolina All Out coming up. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the Dixie Deer Classic, Buckshot Tree Stands, High and Dry Waders, Ugly Buck Wildlife Products, and by these fine sponsors. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. Welcome to Appetite for the Outdoors. I'm Chef Paul Rhodes with Carolina Cooker, and today we're gonna to be cooking a green chili pork loin with a wild boar that was taken out of Johnson County. And we're gonna be cooking that in our Carolina Cooker Dutch oven with the Carolina Cooker tripod stand over a wood burning fire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off heating up our oil in the Dutch oven. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna take our boar and we're gonna season it with some salt and pepper. For, and then we're gonna throw a little Carolina Cooker Cajun seasoning on here. So now we're gonna go ahead, get down here, we're gonna slide the pork in there. Nice sizzle, nice and hot. But we're gonna go ahead and take our pork, put it right here, and we're gonna set it to the side for just a few minutes while we cook everything else. We're gonna go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients. And we're gonna start with our onion. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. We're gonna go ahead and take our tomato paste. We're gonna dump that right in here. All right, then we're gonna take our peppers. We have poblano peppers here and jalapeno peppers for a little bit of kick, parsley, cilantro, and then we're gonna take the rest of our Carolina cooker seasoning. We're just gonna dump that right in there. So we've got diced tomatoes in the juice, chicken stock, juice of one lime. Then we're gonna take two bay leaves. We're gonna take the pork now, set that right on top. All right, we'll give it about 30 minutes. We'll come back and check on it. All right, so we've had the green chili pork in for about 35 minutes now. Uh, you want to make sure that your pork is up to a 165 degrees uh, internal temp so it's safe to eat. All right, so there we go. Campfire green chili pork over Carolina gold rice. Now remember, wild game doesn't need to be intimidating. It just needs to be prepared properly to enjoy tasty meals at home. And we'll see you next time. We made a move in there. Yep. There we go. Another nice crappy. Another crappy to add to the basket. Yeah. We'll be released to the grease. I mean, there's. Yeah, there is. Uh, I love them in so many ways. Yeah. What do you? How do you like? Uh, well, I love them. I love them fried, of course. Sure. But I love the the beauty of them, and I love where you have to go to oh. catch them, and I just yeah, love yeah, the yeah. techniques. There's just so many things to love about them. So. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, you know, there's so many guys that go for the big tug and all the big oh, yeah. big game stuff, but there's but there are so many guys out there who are crazy about these guys right here. That's so right. I, I get it. I get yep. it very well. So Yeah. If you're going to catch that crappy, you know, is there going to be that one thong? There we go. Oh, bluegill. 
<laughs> so he, that's what's down there on the edge, or at least this one. So really pretty up. Bluegill on the edge. Get two eating that same little lure. Old bluegill. Yeah, they are. They are really biting light right now. Yeah, being a little picky. <laughs> oh, yeah. that is a big old fire. My goodness. Well, Kevin, I've had a fantastic time. I think uh, we've released a few and we've kept a few. That's right. Yeah, that's what it's all about. We keep, keep a few in for seed and take a few home to enjoy those again. Because that's what the Wildlife Commission is all about, right? We're, we're all about getting out here and enjoying the outdoors. And if there's an opportunity to take some fish home, absolutely. Well, the flyer is a very interesting fish to me. I've never caught one before. Congratulations. You know, thank you. I think he might be citation even, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not that hard to do, but anyway, I'll take it. I've enjoyed this, and, and really, the experience of being, again, up here in these creeks in northeastern North Carolina, beautiful. Yeah. Spanish moss, just the, the lily pads and everything close in, and these big wide spaces, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's a great place to be and visit, and uh, we hope you come out and find an access area, a boat ramp, or a public launch. You can find that at our ncwildlife.org boating access areas um, and uh, have the opportunity to go out and catch flyer or brim or crappie or even some bass. Um, these, these area uh, creeks are just phenomenal uh, for a swamp water that you might not think a fish actually lives here, but plenty of them do and we're really, really excited that you were able to come out and join us today. I am so excited that I did. Guys, if you want to try to catch a flyer or even better catch fish here on these creeks in northeastern North Carolina, please go to the North Carolina Wildlife Resources website at the bottom of the screen. And remember, our state is your next adventure. Awesome. Bad Daisy.